Rear wheel drive in winter, can it be done? Well, I've got the car for the job, so we may as well give it a go, eh? My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Before we start, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like us to keep bringing you this content. Also, don't forget to follow our socials for updates on our stock. Links in the description below. Now the car I've chosen isn't a 140i, it's a 116D. A, because uh, we don't have a 140i, and B, because many more people have something like this. A three-cylinder diesel with 116 bhp and 270 newton meters of torque. I've also never driven a 116D, and my mind tells me that this thing is going to be frustratingly slow. I guess we better find out with the 30 to 70 sprint. Okay, so it was slow, but was it frustratingly slow? Uh, no, I don't think it was actually. Up to 70 miles an hour at least. Beyond that, it certainly is slow though, but for everyday use, it's just about quick enough. Inside the 1 Series is typical BMW. Well laid out, not too flashy, but undeniably well put together. Everything you touch is high quality, and for a small hatchback, there's a fair amount of room for the driver and passenger. Unfortunately, being rear-wheel drive, the rear passenger space is pretty compromised though. The driver's seat is in my position, and whilst I can just about get comfortable back here, I wouldn't want to spend more than an hour in this seat. For everyone to get comfortable, the driver does have to scooch forward just a tad. You can get an optional armrest, but if you're never carrying rear passengers, then it's not really worth it. Moving to the boot, whilst it's small, it's a nice square shape, so getting large items in is fairly easy. Also, once you fold the seats down, you'll notice it has a flat load floor, which makes shoving longer items through to the front a breeze. Right, to the road. Right then, rear wheel drive in winter. Quite excited to drive this 1160 because it is pretty much the base model 1 series you can get in the UK. I think you can actually get a 114D, but I'm going to assume this is the lowest level I'd like to go. So what's it like driving around town? Well, suspension is sporty but comfortable, steering's nice and light. This doesn't have the full M Sport package, so we don't have flappy paddles or the big M Sport brakes, but I don't really think you need it in a car that's only got just over 100 horsepower. I think it can make do with just the regular brakes. But so far it's easy. I mean, it's like any BMW really. Easy to drive, a little bit of a sporting edge, but all the control weights are really nice and well judged. Things like throttle and brake. You just know what the car is going to do. And even though it's winter, we are running on summer tyres as the roads are fairly clear around London. I don't really think you need proper winter tyres unless you're sort of further up north where you really encounter a lot of snow. Anyway, in terms of parking, this is like any regular one series, of course. Got loads of steering lock. Visibility is fairly good. Could be a little bit better in the side view mirrors. And the rear view is pretty poor, even for a hatchback. For some reason, the rear window is very, very small. Thankfully, you've got parking sensors front and rear on this model, which make it a lot easier. They're very accurate as well, as you can see. So if you do get a one series, definitely get one with at least rearward facing parking sensors otherwise it is fairly hard to judge where the car is. Right coming out of junctions unleash all that all 116 horsepower and as you can see it's relatively drama free. I think something like a 140i you'd probably break traction a bit more there but something like this is just good as a daily driver. Right then, let's reset our trip computer and see what MPG we can get on the motorway. Online, on BMW's website, it says this will do 74 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and just over 80 on the extra urban cycle. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that today, mainly because it's a bit cold and people drive a bit weirdly when it's icy, it's like they don't know what they're doing. But hopefully we can get into the 60s because then I think that is a pretty good figure. 
even for a small engine like this. Right, before the motorway, we're going to do the usual and see what the handling's like. Since it's slippery, we are going to go into Sports Plus, put the gearbox over into Sports as well, this will downshift another gear, keep us in that sweet power band where we can get all that 270 newton metres of torque. Steering weight actually does weight up a bit. Didn't realise it did that if you didn't have the full MTOR pack. All right, foot down. Oh, hey. <laughs> Even a 116, you get a little bit of slip from the rear, which is nice. It's going to be interesting to see if we can get it sideways later. But so far, as a daily driver, it's comfortable, it's quiet, and even in the winter, it handles well. And then let's go into Eco Pro and see if we can get over 70 miles per gallon. Right then, on the motorway, and we're going for best case scenario for MPG. There's not too much traffic today, and I'm going to drive at around 60-ish miles an hour, which is about the sweet spot if you do want to get really good MPG figures out of a car like this. So let's see what we can get. We're currently sitting at 47, but hopefully by the end of the run we'll be sitting at over 60 at least. Before we get to the end of the run though, let's have a chat about the sound isolation, because it's pretty good. I'd say the only car that beats this is probably something like an Audi A3 or maybe a Lexus CT200, but it's so close that it's hard to tell. There's almost no road noise, certainly no wind noise below 70 miles an hour. So yeah, for a hatchback, it is very good. But the thing that this particular one series does that beats all other hatchbacks is seating position. BMW always seem to do a good job there. You can get nice and low, you can adjust the pitch of the base, you've got an extendable bit for your thighs. and it, you know, your legs are sort of at the right distance between you and the pedals. The steering wheel comes nice and close to you, there's plenty of adjustment. And yeah, it feels like a much bigger car when you're behind the wheel. It's hard to describe, like you've got the space of a big car, but you know it's a small car. It's very nice. Then in terms of visibility, it's okay. It's not quite as good as an Audi, but it's doable. You know, there's nothing really major to complain about in that aspect. It's just, you know, the A pillars are slightly thicker and the B pillars quite far forward. But it's certainly livable. Now then, in terms of response on the motorway, I've done stuff like a 220D and a 118D and a 118i. The 118i was just about quick enough and just about responsive enough to be good on the motorway. So we're sitting at 60 miles an hour now. And let me give it, you know, full throttle. Downshifts a couple of gears, and yeah, it, it's it's all right to be fair. It gets from 60 to 70 fairly quickly. So for keeping up with faster motorway traffic, I don't think you're going to have any issues, to be honest. I think it's perfectly good enough. So for a little motorway cruiser, so far it's brilliant. But what about quality? How does it hold up against its competitors? Well, BMW aren't known for doing super quirky interiors, like a Mercedes CLA or an A-Class. But they do build really rugged interiors, especially after about 2014. So you've got nice squidgy materials on the door cards and the dash, you've got a nice bit of stitched, like, fake leather there, which adds a bit of depth to the interior. And yeah, everything just feels really high quality. Everything feels really well put together. There's no rattles, which is a big pet peeve of mine. It's the one thing that, if you're spending a lot of money on a car, you don't want to have. One thing in terms of design that I actually really like in this interior, uh, the dials. I think they actually look really nice. They're like semi-digital, and they have this really high quality glass finish on them that I think, you know, I, I think actually looks nicer than their newer digital dash. Then in terms of wear and tear, everything's pretty good. This car's four years old, and nothing really is showing any signs of permanent damage. The only thing with BMWs to know is that their steering wheels do wear a little bit quicker, but if you look after them and keep them clean, they will be totally fine. You just have to make sure you keep on top of it, as the leather on them could be a little bit better quality, I'd say. But other than that, everything else feels almost brand new. Moving on to spec, if I had three choices, what would I get? Well, the first thing is gonna be ProNav. This is the business nav screen, and for me it's just, no, <laughs> it just really doesn't suit the car. It, it does its job, and if you haven't got the money, then fine. 
it'll do what you need it to do. But the Pro Nav system just, it looks so much nicer because you don't get these huge bezels on the side and it just it fits with the interior a lot better as well. Next thing is going to be this dual zone climate with heated seats. As if you don't have it, it does kind of look a bit cheap. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth getting that. And the last thing is going to be the Harman Kardon sound system. This car doesn't have it. And the standard sound system, whilst passable, is not even close to as good as the Harman Kardon system. A, with the Harman Kardon system, you get a nice speaker grill there, so it adds a bit of quality into the interior and does look nice. And B, you just get a much richer sound. And when you're going into a premium brand, I think the basic stuff like that, you really need to get. So those are my three main things. Your Pro Nav screen, heat seats with dual zone climate, and your Harman Kardon sound. If you do have extra money, I would try and get cruise control, especially if you're going for diesel, because I'm assuming you're gonna be spending a lot of time on the motorway if you're going for a diesel car. So it's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to have. If not, it's not the end of the world. So typical, isn't it? You said there wasn't any traffic, and now we're coming into a load of traffic. Well, finally, we are off the M25, and here is the main culprit onto why we were sitting in traffic for the past, well, half an hour. <laughs> One singular car. Oh. Anyway, we managed 52.5 mpg, which I know is nowhere near that 74 mpg figure, but as you just saw, we've been sitting in traffic for ages, so obviously we're not going to get that figure. However, for sitting in traffic, we still managed a pretty insane figure, really. 52.4 miles per gallon. I'm pretty impressed with that. And I'm certain on a longer run, when there's no traffic, you will easily get over 60. But 74? I just don't see it. I think it would have to be a perfectly clear run to get anywhere near even 70 miles per gallon in this thing. I'm sure if you did a trip up to Scotland or something like that, you'd probably average about 71 if you were driving exactly 56 miles an hour the whole way. But in the real world, you're probably going to get maximum about 65. That's still really impressive. Anyway, let's now get on a B road and see if a base model diesel can be any fun. Right, everything's back in full attack. Let's see what we can manage. Handling is very similar to every other one series, of course, which means you can carry a nice amount of pace around the corners. But, put your foot down, doesn't really want to break much traction. You can feel the rear squiggle around a little bit, but it never really lets go. It does mean it's very safe though, especially for younger drivers that are less experienced. Still got a nice balance. Steering is lovely and precise. It's still a BMW at the end of the day. Right foot down here, let's see what we can do. Yeah, not quite as quick as uh, most cars. For 116 horsepower though, I think it is pretty decent. Like, you can still keep up with faster traffic. Not really a big issue. It's only when you're going above 70 miles an hour this thing really starts to struggle. But you're not really going to be doing much of that anyway. Especially, like, if you're a younger driver, most younger drivers these days are on black boxes, so you can't go above 70. <laughs> Otherwise, you void your insurance. Right, let's go around one more time, actually. I just want to see if I missed anything. I see a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement. Yeah, it's just, it's so close to breaking traction, but it's, it's just not quite there. Like, to put it in perspective, I'm having as much fun in this as I was in a VW Golf GTI. So, yes, the chassis matters, the steering matters, and most importantly, power delivery and where that power goes to matters. Rear wheel drive, front engine, you can't beat it. It 
a recipe for success. And it means you can go fairly quick in this thing. Once you're up to speed, you're going around corners faster than a lot of hot hatches, really. And look, 50, 60, and there we go, 70. This is the thing I love about BMWs. No matter which one you buy, they're all at least a bit fun. My God, that sun is bright today. And look, we're in winter. The roads are greasy and we're still not really breaking traction much. Oh, there's a little bit, a little bit of slip. Nothing crazy. <laughs> so yeah, for a first car, it's, it's great practice to get used to that rear wheel drive sensation. You can still feel it pushing you around the corner. I think if you want to get a perfect balance of economy and fun, that 20D engine is perfect because you get still around 50 miles per gallon, but you get 190 horsepower. You know, that's the same as a VW Golf GTD. And it means you can do big power slides if you want to. Of course, on private property. I do understand not everyone wants to do that though. So if you're just looking for something economical, but still fun when you're behind the wheel, this is a great choice because you get a premium car at the end of the day as well. And when it does come to a B road, if you're not looking to slide it about at all. It's still fun, you know, you've got nice playful steering, you can feel what's going on underneath you. The suspension is firm and sporty, but not uncomfortable. It's a very well-judged car. And on a longer run, you're gonna do over 60 miles per gallon, which not many of the cars can do, really. Okay, moving on, tight to B road. This is where a lot of people panic in winter. They think, oh, rear wheel drive, you're gonna get stuck. You know, the roads are icy, especially down here, like a small B road, but it's nothing the car can't handle. And again, we're on summer tires. Let me show you. Look at that. Pretty nippy down here, isn't it? No, for non M Sport brakes, it's pretty sharp as well. <laughs> Look, you can see a bit of black ice on the road. I think a lot of fear comes from people that are inexperienced and or people that put brands like Smartway tires on their cars, which really do have no grip, even when the roads are dry. You know, I've driven my Cupra in winter down roads like this, and I've driven rear wheel drive cars down exactly the same road with very similar tires on. And I have to say the rear wheel drive cars, once you're confident with them, they're better, really, especially if you've got something like a diff. I mean, this car doesn't have one, but, you know, if you said, like, I've got an M40i, put a diff on it, and you're running just normal summer tyres, the chances of you getting stuck in anything, you know, less than one inch of snow, are pretty much zero, really. But for a car like this, you know, I would probably put something like a Michelin Cross Climate on, so you've got the best of both worlds then. You've got slightly less grip in the summer so you can still have a bit of fun with it. And you've got just enough grip in the winter that if you do find yourself in a sticky situation, the tires are gonna be good enough to get you out of it. So overall, what's my verdict on this car? Well, I have to say my verdict is that I like it. In fact, I think it's a fantastic car for young drivers as it's an insurance group 16, which is pretty much as low as you can go for a car like this. For comparison, a base model Toyota Yaris is only in Group 14, so if you want something rear-wheel drive, quick enough for the motorway, and luxurious enough to keep you comfortable, then the 116D is a cracking car for new drivers. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like, and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale. My name's Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.